Hey everyone, welcome back to Teacher FYI. I'm Mackenzie and I teach fifth grade in Northern California. First of all, thank you so much for supporting this new channel. I missed you all last week. We are about 12 weeks into virtual teaching and with the election and report cards coming up, it has been very busy, so I just need to take a step back, catch my breath a bit. As we know, with virtual teaching, there are some really good days and some really hard days, and so I'm really excited to be back to continue sharing my teaching tips and experiences with you since I will be teaching virtually the entire year. I do have fun and teaching tips every week, so if you do find this video helpful, please feel free to share it with all your teacher friends and click that subscribe button so you can be notified of all my future videos. If you've enjoyed any of my videos so far, it would really help this channel out if you click that thumbs up button so that more teachers can discover these videos. So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing how I've been using Google Slides with my students during breakout rooms to keep them more engaged on the online classroom. To be honest, I did not even use breakout rooms in the spring. I was way too nervous to try them out. And this year, since I know I will be virtual the entire year, I knew it was something I wanted to become more comfortable using so that my students still had plenty of time to interact with each other, communicate with their peers, since that peer interaction really is so limited this year. So I'm going to share some ways that I have been using Google Slides with my students so that breakout room time is more meaningful, it's holding them more accountable for their learning, and just some activities that my students have really enjoyed doing. So let's get into it. So one way that I have been using Google Slides with my students is having my students work in pairs in their breakout room to create a thin slide on a Google Slide presentation deck. So it is called a thin slide because it is thin on content and thin on visual imagery. And their goal is to synthesize a really big concept or topic that you've been working on in class down to just one word or phrase and add one picture to their slide. So the first thing you need to do is to prepare a blank slide deck so it's really easy to prepare for. And then when you put your students out into breakout rooms with their partner, they work on the slide deck that coordinates with the breakout room that they've been put in. So for example, if they are in breakout room six, then I tell them just to work on Google slide six. When you do share the slide deck, make sure that you have clicked that share and enabled editing access because the whole class is going to need to edit their slide and they're working on the same slide deck as a whole class. I then give them their prompt. So that can either be a word, an idea, a concept, or a topic you've been working on in class. So for example, if I told them respect then their job with their partner is to create just one thin slide with one word or one phrase and add one picture to show what respect means to them. My students only have five to 10 minutes, depending on what the topic is, to design their slide. And then we come back as a whole class and they have only 30 seconds to share their presentation. While they're working, I love using Google Slides because you can click the grid view feature where you can then see everybody's slide. And then if I notice that one group is maybe having a hard time getting started, I can jump into their breakout room and give them some extra support. I've also adjusted the criteria for thin slides by using it for vocabulary words. So for example, in science, I one time had my students go into breakout rooms of groups of two or three students. When I prepared the slide deck, I had a different vocabulary word on each slide. And then when my students went out to breakout rooms, they were able to pick which vocabulary word they wanted to work on with their group. And so they added their names. And then in just five to 10 minutes, they needed to design a slide with the word, one definition, one picture, and add one fact about that word. This was great because it made it more meaningful and then when we came back as a class and they shared out each of their vocabulary terms, the students then had an entire slide deck with all of their vocabulary words that they could refer back to during their lessons. I love that Thin Slides is meant to not be a huge time commitment and my students have had so much fun. They're really able to practice those speaking and listening skills when we come back as a whole class and it has held them more accountable when they're working in that breakout room time since they're giving a task, a set amount of time to complete that task and then share out with the rest of the group. Another example of a lesson that I've done using Thin Slides was really recently when I did a lesson on author's tone and mood. So I paired up my students into their breakout rooms. With their partner, they needed to find an image from their favorite movie or their favorite book, and then they needed to add just one word to describe the mood and one word to describe the tone of that image. That was a really quick and easy way to check in with my students after we did the lesson on author's tone and mood. By making the criteria simple, it really narrows your students' focus to create something meaningful and really make the most of that time together in their breakout room to create something they're proud of to present to the class. 
So a second way that I have been using Google Slides has been to create math game boards for my students. So I have really missed having those math centers for my students and I wanted a way for them to still have that time together and I have found breakout rooms and Google Slides to be a great combination to make that happen. For example, my students have been practicing rounding decimals, so I created a game board on Google Slides where I just inserted a table with different numbers, my students needed to roll a dice to create a three digit number, and my students needed to round that number and place their playing piece onto the game board. And their goal was to connect four in a row. With Google Slides, I was able to create that game board by inserting a table, I added the numbers, and then I had the directions on the side. Now, with a lot of games that we would play in the classroom, they needed to roll dice or use spinners, and for this game specifically, they needed to roll three dice. So Google actually has a free dice tool, and so I just linked that into the Google Slide game board, so then when my students were playing, they could just click, and then it would open up to a new tab. And on that dice tool, there are so many different types of dice that you can use for your games, and you can even make them roll three dice at one time, and so that's just an extra a little fun piece that you can include in those game boards. So with Google Slides, I was also able to create little game pieces for my students. So to do that, you can just go up to the shape tool. If you want to create the circular game pieces, then I would click the circle. I would change the color so that there's two different colors for your students to play with. And then you can just copy and paste as many as you want. You then can align them so that they're all stacked. And then your students can just click and drag onto the game board. So in the classroom, I really liked using those little mini erasers from Target. And so my students would use those as their game pieces. So if you just want to add a little touch of fun, then you can also just insert some clip art and then just copy the clip art and stack those and use those as little game pieces too. So once I'm happy with my game board, I then just copy that entire slide and make about 20 game boards so my students can go in and play with a partner. I've made different versions of this game so they could round to the tens or round to the hundreds or round to the ones. And then I just keep that in Google Classroom so it's almost like a math center that they can go in and play when they finish their work early during distance learning. And I also encourage them to play with their family at home where they can just open it up and practice their math that way. So they had so much fun with this. They were completely engaged that entire time in their breakout room. So that was just one example of a math game that I have played with my students. It was super easy to make. And I know there are a lot of different types of bingo games or connect four games or different content areas that you could make for your students. And if you have those game boards, you can just copy and paste them into those Google slide decks and then share that and play as a whole class class or put your students into breakout rooms so they can play with each other. So a third way to use Google Slides with your students during breakout rooms is doing the jigsaw activity. So the jigsaw activity is a reading strategy to help your students deepen their comprehension while also working together in those breakout rooms. This is perfect when you're short on time and it also holds your students accountable when working together. So how I do this using Google Slides is I find an article, for example, I found this article on ReadWorks. I then link the article on the slide just so my students have access to the entire entire article, and then I take a screenshot of the different sections that I want each group to focus on. Then I break my students up into expert groups. It is called their expert group because they are becoming experts on just one section of that article. So on Google Slides, I break up the article into different sections and one section on each slide. Now when my students are working in groups, they're only working on that one section of the article. So together they need to read the article, summarize it, find the main idea and the key details, and then I also have included some extra sticky notes that I have created using the shape tool where they can add any extra questions and thoughts that they had while working together in their breakout room. This really deepens their comprehension because they're only focusing on a smaller part of that article, and as we know that time together online goes by super quickly, and so they're able to narrow their focus on a smaller section. I also assign roles to my students when they're in those expert groups. So one student is designated the speaker and their job is to share out when we come back together as a whole class. There's also a facilitator that keeps everybody on track that's in charge of making sure everybody's participating, a timekeeper to keep track of the time. I usually give them about 10 minutes depending on the length of the article. And then finally a recorder who's in charge of actually doing the typing for their group. And usually they'll also share their screen while they're working together in their breakout room. Now, all expert groups work on the same Google Slide presentation when it's shared with them, so they still have access to the rest of the article and all the notes from the other expert groups. When they're done reading and summarizing, we come back as a whole class. Each speaker from the expert groups shares out their main ideas and key details that their group talked about, then they're put into their jigsaw group. For example, my students were reading an article about the three branches of government. 
So there was an expert group that was in charge of each section about the different branches. So now their jigsaw group is going to have a student from each part of those sections together. So it's like a jigsaw puzzle. This is where that accountability piece really plays a big part because now their job is to make sure that everyone else in their group understands their section of their article. Then when our Zoom call is over, I usually have put together a Google form with some questions about that article to see how that jigsaw activity went and see how well they were able to communicate with their peers and deepen their comprehension with that article. The jigsaw activity is a great way to strengthen your students' comprehension. It gives them more time to process that information with their peers, check in with you as a whole class, and then have another opportunity to actually teach their classmates. I really have loved using the jigsaw activity specifically on Zoom this year because I feel like that time goes by so quickly and they're able to really narrow their focus on a specific section and then they're still communicating with their peers, they're able to teach their classmates, which is really helping with their comprehension. So that's another way I've been using Google Slides. Again, I use that same Google Slide presentation link for all my students and make sure you click that editing access button so they can for sure write on it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. I would love to hear how you're using your breakout room time with your students, what activities have been working really well. And if you have any questions, you can also leave those down in the comments below. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up so it can reach even more teachers. And if you have not already, please be sure to click that subscribe button. I'll catch you next time. Bye everyone.